In today's video, I want to take a look at include guards. Why are they useful and what troubles can you get into if you don't use them? So, let's take a look uh, at a somewhat more complex project, right? In this video, we're going to have a lot uh, of files that we're going to work with, so <laughs> keep that in mind. So, let's start with defining a struct. I'm going to say here type def struct point, and I'm going to say here point, that's fine. I'm going to say int x and int y, right? And let's think that uh, we want to reuse this uh, struct in many places in our project. And we don't only have the main.c file, right? So let's move this struct to another file, right? We're going to go ahead here and just create a point.h, right? And uh, yeah, let's go to main and copy this and put it right here inside point.h. So now we can basically reuse this point struct. So we can go here and include it, so I'm going to say include point.h. All right, and now in main here, let's say we want point p equals, I'm going to initialize here dot x with, I don't know, let's say one and dot y with also one. Uh, that's great. Now let's say that this, this part where we initialize this point, we want it to also be in a different uh, file for whatever reason, right? So we're going to go here and create a, so let's say here, I don't know, let's say point utils dot h, right? And here we're going to also define a, well, we're just going to declare the function and define it in the .c file. So we're going to say here, um, point, let's say new point, and it doesn't take any parameters. Uh, but because this is a, <laughs> this is using, this is making use of the point file, we actually need to include the point.h, right? So we're going to have to say point.h, uh, not like that, but like this. And there we go, this should properly compile. So now we have three files, right? We have two more um, header files, and we also want to add the um, definition of this function, right? This is a function, but it doesn't have a definition. We want to make use of it. So we're going to add another point utils.c this time, right? So we're going to have here a point utils.c, and this guy is going to make use of our uh, point utils.h file. And here we basically just say point, new point, yep. And then we're actually going to create a point here. So point P equals basically what we did here in the main function, right? So we're going to just take this off here and then place it here and then return. That's all. All right, now let's actually make use of some code and try to compile everything together. So we're going to have here a point, let's call it P. I'm going to call this new point function that's going to initialize our point with the um, X and Y as one, and I'm going to just have it here a print statement that says, I don't know, let's say uh, x is percent %d, and then y is percent %d, uh, let's say backslash n, and uh, p.x and p.y, there we go. And as you can see, we're getting here a simple error that basically says that new point is not found, because new point is actually in our point utils uh, .h file here is declared, so we, that's that's what we need to include to be able to use it. So we're going to have to have here a point dot point utils dot h file included right now we should be able to now if we try to compile this if, if i just say gcc main main dot c it's not going to work simply because we need to also add our other c file to the compilation uh unit so we're going to have to do something like point utils dot c as well. right now we should be able to compile things but we are actually getting a very strange error and there are many errors here, but the most important one is this one, where it says error redefinition of struct point, right? Basically, what's saying is that we are, we, we have this code, this type of struct point, multiple times in our compilation unit, in our main.obj uh, file, basically. And because of that, we cannot, uh, we cannot compile it. But how come do we have actually two type of struct Point. We only have one, right? We, we just have here a point.h with type of struct. There's nothing more to it. Well, it's a bit more complex than that. And it has to do with the fact that the C compiler and the preprocessor is not very smart. It's just basically the preprocessor is just copying and pasting things from all over the place. So what it's doing is, for example, when it sees include point.h, it's literally going to point.h and just copying everything here. And this is the resulting code, right? And then here, when it sees point utils.h, it's well, what it's going to do is just going to go to this file and just uh, copy and paste everything in its place. And because it says another include, it says another include here, it's going to go to this file as well and 
uh, copy it and paste it in its place. And this is where we actually get the redefinition. It's because of including point.h in both main.c and pointutils.h, right? So because we are uh, including point.h twice, we are really uh, doing type def struct point twice in our project. But hold on a second, isn't there a way to just, um, you know, include the files in uh, such a way that you don't have to uh, have this problem? Well, in our case, yes. You can just simply remove this include point.h and everything is fine and dandy because this guy, this pointutils.h, already includes point.h. This works fine for our little project, but if we have, let's say, another type of utils, let's say a line utils, that also includes point.h, right? So imagine that we have here another one that says line utils, right? And in this file, we also have point.h, and we need to make use of functions from both files, then there's nothing that uh, we can do. We either use uh, point utils or line utils. We cannot use both. Or, well, we cannot use both until we introduce include guards. So include guards are basically just a condition to the preprocessor so that it doesn't add things multiple times in the same compilation unit, right? And how can you do that? Well, it's actually a very simple and straightforward process. So what we can do is just simply define a variable, right? You can just simply say define and let's call it point underscore h. And this is just a preprocessor uh, pre -processor symbol. Right? And the, the preprocessor doesn't say, oh, hey, I have this point underscore h. It doesn't, ha doesn't have a value. It doesn't need to have a value. It's just a, a definition. So once we include this file, the preprocessor will actually recognize this definition. And there's one more thing that we can do at the preprocessor level, and that is to check if something is being defined at the preprocessor level. So we can say here, hashtag, if not defined point dot h or point underscore h, then define it, define our type def struct, and here we're gonna say e, uh, and if, right? So this is basically an include guard. How is it a guard? You, you might say, well, let's go back to our main.c uh, file. No, actually. And now if we try to compile this, you'll notice that everything it's fine and then yeah, we can actually run this if you want and there we go you get one one that's perfectly fine but why does it work well let's manually expand the preprocessor directives right so let's go i'm gonna not expand stdio but i'm gonna go to point.h and as i said all the preprocessor does is copy and paste i'm just copy and paste okay perfectly fine and the preprocessor is gonna say well uh, here we're defining point .h, that's perfectly fine, but uh, this doesn't amount to any code, so it's going to actually delete it, right? There's going to be nothing more, but it's going to keep in mind in its process that point underscore h, the, the preprocessor uh, definition exists, right? So it's going to go here to point utils.h, it's going to also copy and paste it here, and it's going to go to point .h, and, well, it's going to copy and paste, but then it's going to be like, well, this this point underscore h looks familiar. This has been defined already. So I'm going to skip this if. And where does this if end? Well, it's, it's going to end here. So we're not going to actually add anything from this point on, right? So this part is not going to be included. So just delete it. And there we go. That's how include guards work. Um, just the first time you include the, the file, is going to paste it, paste its contents, and it's going to store a variable, a definition of the uh, preprocessor type that's going to say, well, we already have stored this file. And it's important to have different names for different files. So I, just, this is why I chose point underscore h. If you have another, for example, line.h, you're going to use line underscore h. You can use whatever name you want, just have them different for different files. That's very important. Now, instead of having these, uh, if not define and then define and then choosing a variable name and then at the end having an end if, there is a more, more modern approach to this. And that is using the pragma once. So we can just say pragma once and not care about anything else. And if we do that, it's basically the same as uh, creating an include, an include guard for the whole file. So now if we try to compile this, you will notice there's no errors and of course it runs without any problems. 
So as a recap, because I, this is a bit more complex because we have way too many files for way too little code, but to, to uh, properly understand, here is the main.c file, right? We have two more files that are included, point.h and pointutils.h. Here they are, point.h actually has this, just uh, this pragma ones, or you can use the if and define um, include guard. And we have here the struct. And inside pointutils.h, we have just a function that has, that makes use of this point.h. Right, and inside our uh, point utils.c file, we have the uh, definition of this function. Now, before you go, there are a few gotchas to these uh, include guards. Right, um, you might think that oh, because we do have include guards, well, we can define anything here, and everything that we define will be only will only be defined once. Right, um, so we can just have here, for example, a global variable. We can just say here int global x, let's say, equals, I don't know, 10. But if we try to compile this, we're going to get a different error. This time is not a redefinition, it's just multiple definitions of global underscore x was found. And this is the linker that is telling us that, not the compiler. That is very strange, right? Um, as it turns out, for every single file that we have here, we are including every single, or for example, every single header that we have included only once, but that is per, per source file, per .c file, per compilation unit, is it, it's called. Right, so in main.c, we have this points.h, but also in pointutils.c, we have this uh, point.h. In fact, in the obg file, not the, the, the c file itself, right? That is uh, the first step to compilation. So from main.c, we get a main.obg file, that has this um, point.h included, and from pointutils.c we have a pointutils.obj file that also has this uh, point.h included. Now the problem is when we actually try to link everything together, uh, the type definition of the struct that's that's, probably, that's perfectly fine as long as they are the same. That that's no problem. But if we have global variables, then basically the the linker doesn't know where to put that global variables. Is it going to be on, on the obj file of the main or the point utils, right? So we are basically redefining it or having multiple definition, definitions of the same variable. So having global variables uh, cannot be done simply by using headers like this. You're going to still have to use, uh, as I showed before, you're going to still have to use the extern keyword and define it in the .c file, because that way if you define it in the .c file, you only have one um, obg file that actually defines the variable and everyone else just uses the declaration. Right? So as a conclusion, what do include guards do? Well, they just prevent us from including the same uh, header multiple times, but only in the same compilation unit, only for the same well, .c file that we list here in the, uh, in the GCC command, right? Or whatever compiler you might be using. That's it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Again, the source code can be found on our website down below. Take care. Bye.